Hey there guys, I usually start my videos with a short clip of me and some other players fighting a raid boss, and in this video it is not any different, however I did never really make a video about raids in Guild Wars 2, so this video is going to be a beginner's guide to get started in raids. Raiding is my favorite game mode in Guild Wars 2, I love everything about it, the rotations, the pressure that a raid boss can put on your team, and of course the teamwork. Raiding can be overwhelming, and I do think that casual and even more dedicated players are put off by raiding. The learning curve might be a bit too high, or they can't find a group that fits their current experience in raiding. Players might feel that the gap between open world PvE and raids is just too big. Back when the first raid wing, the Spirit Veil, vale, was released, raiding was considered extremely difficult for some players. But since then, years have passed, multiple raid wings have been released and overall people have become more experienced and now I think everyone should be able to play raids. And before you go into the comments and say that people that raid are toxic, keep it cool. I will try to help you out and find a group that fits your current raiding experience. Raiding in Guild Wars 2 isn't so much about dealing the most damage, it is more about knowing the mechanics of each boss. So, if you know the mechanics of a raid boss, then you have already come a long way. In this video I'm going to explain the basics of raiding in Guild Wars 2. I'm going to cover profession difficulty, choosing a build, the importance of your rotation, gear, finding a group and learning the boss mechanics. Also, to start raiding you will need the Heart of Thorns expansion and it would really be helpful if you also have the Path of Fire expansion. I'm not going to discuss every raid boss mechanic mechanic, those deserve a video on their own. It is best to read up on a guide or watch a video dedicated for that specific raid boss. This video is only going to focus on the basics and what you need to get started. As usual with my lengthier videos, you can find the timestamps in the video description. Alright, let's get into the video. Why would you want to raid in the first place? The rewards of course. You could want to raid because of the prestigious titles, unique skins or just for fun, which is a reward itself. After you defeat a raid boss, you will be given a number of magnetite shards or gating crystals, depending on the raid wing. Next to that, you will also get gold, a legendary insight, a fragment of the boss you just defeated, which can be used to create a statue in your guild hall, and another exotic or ascended item. Legendary insights are used to craft legendary equipment, but it is also used to show your experience and join higher level groups. I will discuss this later in the video. Anyway, those magnetite shards and gating crystals are a currency which can be spent at a raid vendor who can be found throughout the raid wing or at the Lion's Arch aerodrome. This currency can be spent on exclusive ascended weapons, armor, trinkets, infusions and more. Magnetite shards are obtained from the wings 1, 2, 3 and 4. Gating crystals are obtained from the wings 5, 6, 7 and possibly another 8 wing in the future. Magnetite shards and gating crystals come in real handy if you want to gear up an alt or if you want to have another set of armor on your main character. But more about gearing your characters later in the video. One thing to keep in mind is that these magnetite shards and gating crystals have a cap each week. You can get up to 150 magnetite shards and 100 gating crystals each week. This cap could increase in the future if ArenaNet decides to release more raid wings. A quick example, if you decide to do wing 1, 2 and 3, that would mean that you would already have 150 magnetite shards. The completion of wing 4 would mean that you won't get any magnetite shards from defeating bosses. However, defeating a boss would still give you that legendary insight and another exotic or ascended item if you haven't defeated the boss that week. So if you're in it for the gating crystals or the magnetite shards, make sure to check your weekly cap before starting a raid wing. You can easily check this by having a look at your currency tab in your inventory. A quick note about rewards is that you can only get them once a week per raid boss. You can still defeat a raid boss if you join another party but the rewards are drastically decreased. If you do a boss for the second time in a week you won't get legendary insights, that exotic or ascended item or a boss fragment. Therefore I would advise you to do a raid boss just once a week. A new raid week starts at Monday depending on where you live. For me that is around 1am in the morning on Monday since I live in Central Europe. Monday is also a great time to start raiding since all raid wings have been reset and everyone is eligible to get all the rewards. If you are looking for a party I would try it on Monday or Tuesday evening. Moving on to our next segment, let's have a look at what profession you should play and their difficulty. In raiding, not every profession is easy to play. Some professions have easier builds and rotations than others. Therefore, I would choose starter or intermediate professions when you just started raiding. This gives you more time and space to focus on the raid mechanics instead of your rotation. Depending on the rotation and the role that a profession has in a raid group, I would advise you to start with the following professions. Keep in mind that this list is subjective 
perspective. If you think other professions are better, please share them in the comments. So if you are completely new to raiding, I would advise you to go for my so-called starter professions. These consist out of the warrior, the guardian and the ranger, specifically the healing druid. Why these professions? Well, a banner warrior is used in almost every raid setup and has a role of supporting the rest of the team with your banners. It is one of the easier yet important roles that every raid group should have. The banner support warrior has a rather easy rotation that requires a bit of practice for optimal damage output. However, you are mainly there to support your allies with your banners. I made a separate video about this build and other warrior builds, so be sure to check that out if you want more information on the matter. Second, we have the Guardian. Why the Guardian? The Guardian is one of the easier professions to start with if you want to DPS in raiding. There are Dragon Hunter builds that can be used at most raid bosses. That's really nice since this means that you won't have to gear up different professions and won't have to change your build and armor when you're playing a Dragon Hunter. A Guardian also has a great Firebrand healing build that can be used in most situations. However, a Druid is still preferred as a healer in most raiding team compositions. Last, we have the Ranger, specifically the Healing Druid. The healing druid is used in most team compositions for raiding, especially in pug groups and less experienced groups. The healing druid plays a crucial role. The healing druid can easily heal up an entire team with just a couple of skills. Also, the druid brings several spirits which can further buff your allies damage. The druid is relatively easy to understand and to master. However, you require good knowledge of the raid bosses since most teams rely on your healing to keep them alive. If you want more information about raiding builds and professions, I'd suggest you watch my best professions video. In this video, I will explain the best raiding builds for each profession. I feel it's unnecessary to rephrase the content of that video in this one, so be sure to check it out if you are interested in raiding builds for your profession. Let's conclude this segment with the most common raid setups. As we have just discussed, the warrior and the druid are used in most team compositions in raiding. However, there are also other professions involved in a raiding squad. Usually a raiding party consists out of two chrono monsters that provide your team with quickness and alacrity, one warrior to buff your allies with banners and in some cases with empower allies, one druid to buff and heal your allies, and six DPS players. The builds and professions of these DPS players highly depend on the raid boss. Now, if you just started playing raids, this won't make much sense to you especially as a DPS player. So what kind of DPS should you use on a boss? Let's discuss that in our Raid Wing difficulty segment. Generally speaking, an older Raid Wing in Guild Wars 2 isn't easier than a more recent Raid Wing. For example, Wing 5, where you have to travel to the Underworld and face the Demigod Doom, is significantly harder than Wing 6, where you have to dive into the Mystic Forge and help Zomoros to beat Kadim. So, what kind of build should I use? Most bosses can be defeated with power-based armor and stats. This means that you can use Berserker gear, which has the stats, power, precision and ferocity. This allows you to maximize the direct damage you do to a boss. An example of a power build is an engineer that uses bombs, grenades and the Photon Forge ability to do damage with direct attacks. There are a number of bosses that are harder to defeat with power-based builds and armor. This is usually the case with bosses that move a lot, or when the environment is against you and has many elements where you have to move around. In this case, we want to use a condition-based build. Instead of direct damage, we apply conditions or negative effects to a boss that deal damage over time. Usually, condition-based builds use Viper's gear to deal the most damage over time. Viper's gear has the following stats, condition damage, power, precision and expertise. An example of a condition build is a condition renegade. This renegade build uses torment to damage raid bosses when they move around and the build also uses conditions like bleeding and burning. For a more in detail updated version of power and condition builds, I would suggest to have a look at the Snowcrow's website. You can find the website in the video description. So what should you use where and where should you start? Have a look at the screen. In this case, you want to start with the oldest raid wing, the Spirit Veil. Why? Basically every raider out there has done this wing and it only requires you to play a power DPS if you are playing a DPS. That means that as a DPS player you can basically use one profession to complete the whole raid wing with. Actually, I'm quite certain that your whole team can stay the same for the entire raid wing. No need to change professions. What about the other raid wings? Let me sum that up and have a look at the screen. So. Let's start with Wing 1, the Spirit Veil. It has three bosses that can easily be beaten with power gear. Then, I would personally focus on Wing 3, 
Stronghold of the Faithful, and Wing 4, Bastion of the Penitent. These are raid wings that only require power gear and are rather straightforward. The last bosses of raid wing 3 and 4 can be rather difficult to beat, but with some practice you should be able to do it. Then I would suggest you to go to wing 2, Salvation Pass. This one has its first conditioned boss at the end. So if you want to beat that one, get your condition gear ready or condition profession ready. The first boss of wing 2 can also be hard if you are lacking team coordination. Second to last are wing 6, the Mithrite Gambit, and wing 7, the Key of Adashim. These raid wings are rather new. They are also a bit harder to complete since these raid wings also use a mix of power and condition based bosses. The last wing I would go to as a new raider is wing 5, the Hall of Chains. The reason being is that the boss at the end of the raid is really hard. It requires good team coordination and timing from the entire team. Not just that, the first boss is also rather difficult for newer players since the playing field gets smaller and has multiple elements that can instantly kill your party. So that is my advice in which order you should try and complete the current raid wings. If you have another order in mind or have an additional comment, make sure to leave them below the video. Now we just talked about condition and power based builds, but how should you get this gear and do optimal damage with these builds? Well, let's first talk about gear. For raiding, it is advised to use full ascended armor, weapons and trinkets. However, if you have trouble getting ascended armor, you could also start with ascended weapons and trinkets while the rest of your gear is exotic. I do advise you to get full ascended gear if you can, especially if you just started raiding. The increase in stats does a good amount of extra damage and can make up for mistakes in your rotation. Now, how should you get ascended armor? Well, that really deserves a guide itself. There are a number of ways to get ascended armor, however, there are just a few methods that are commonly used. These include completing living world achievements, crafting, fractals of the mists and raiding itself. I would start with getting ascended trinkets and rings since these are the easiest to get, especially the ones with berserker stats. If you have a guild, you can start by participating in guild missions. You need a guild and a couple of guildies to get this off the ground. Most active guilds do them once a week. After completing a guild mission, you can trade in the guild accommodations that you get from participating in a guild mission at the appropriate vendor. You can also get ascended trinkets with laurels. Laurels can easily be obtained by just logging in on Guild Wars 2. You can see your progress of getting your next set of laurels in the achievement panel. Ascended weapons and armor are a little bit trickier to get. You cannot buy these with guild accommodations or laurels. The easiest method of getting ascended weapons and armor is by purchasing them with magnetite shards or gating crystals. But hey, that's a bit hard if you don't have any and you just started raiding. So if you want ascended armor and weapons, I would advise you to get them in Fractals of the Mists, completing specialization collections or by crafting them. Crafting them could be a bit expensive, but by crafting your gear it is guaranteed that you have the stats you want. This is how I got my first ascended armor with berserker stats. I still use it to this day, whereas in Fractals of the Mist you are dependent on the drops from a daily chest. So to sum it up, get your trinkets and rings through laurels and guild accommodations and get your first set of ascended armor and weapons through crafting. If you think another way of getting ascended gear is better, please leave it in the comments. Now you got your gear, it is time to practice your skill rotation. Is it important? Yes it is. Especially when you are new to raiding, you want to master certain skill rotations and combinations to better understand your profession and do the most damage. In most cases, you only have 10 minutes to defeat a raid boss, so you want to deal enough damage to defeat the raid boss in time. Knowing the correct skill rotations will not only make you do more damage but it could also make up for the lack of knowledge of a raid boss you haven't done before. Having mastered your profession and rotation allows you to pay more attention to the actions of the boss, your squad and changes in the environment. For example, does Mina, the Solus Horror, the first boss of Wing 5, has a lot of changes in the environment during the fight. If you lack the knowledge of your profession or skill rotation, then you will most likely deal less than the required amount of damage and you won't be able to finish the fight in time. So how do you master your skill rotation? Well, it requires some practice, especially if you are a DPS profession. First, you want to head to the Snowcrow's website or any other website that has rotations for raid builds and navigate to the build you are playing or want to play. Then look for the skill rotation in a video or a written guide. This might look very complicated, but with some practice you can pull it off too. Second, you want to try out the skill rotation on the DPS column in Lion's Arch Aerodrome. Walk up to the arena settings machine and select the following. Adjust self, boons, all of them. Then go to the profession mechanics and select warrior, banner of strength, banner of discipline and empower allies. Then go to ranger, sun spirit, 
Frost Spirit and Spotter. Up next, you want to head up to the Golem Spawner and select the following. Spawner Golem, huge. In most cases, you want to select huge. Strong enemy, 10 million health. And then select additional options, add conditions, all of them. And then, last but not least, select Please spawn my golem. Also, use the food that is required for your build, else you won't hit the numbers you could get. I know the food costs gold, but it helps a lot to nail your rotation and get a realistic view of how well you are performing. Each build uses a different kind of food, so have a look at what kind of food your build uses and purchase some from the trading post. Why do we select these settings? Well, these settings reflect the most realistic scenario when you are up against a raid boss. The buffs on yourself is what you and your squad should be having up all of the time. Mainly the boons, might, fury, quickness and alacrity. Now, last but not least, you want to try out your rotation. Try it slowly and read up on why you want to execute the rotation in that specific order. I know it looks hard, but a bit of practice could get you a long way. Give it 15 minutes on the DPS golem and see how far you have come. Also, I use an add-on called Arc DPS. This handy tool gives you a good overview which skills use the most damage and give an accurate view of how you are performing. Keep in mind that this is a third party application and therefore there could be risks attached to it. If anything happens to your PC or your Guild Wars 2 account, ArenaNet nor myself are not responsible for it. Use this add-on at your own risk. However, I've been using it for years without any problems, so if anything happens it is most likely not the fault of Arc DPS. There is no need to panic if you don't hit the numbers that are shown in the video or on a website. You are new, you will most likely start out in a training group. These kind of groups will not look at your DPS but instead focus on explaining the boss mechanics to you and help you get better at raiding. But it sure helps if you know what skills deal the most damage and what combos deal this extra damage. Now, your journey can finally begin. Let's look for a group. If you are new, it really helps if you have a group of friends or guildies that want to play raids with you. This makes it easier for you to get a group together and you can help each other explain and learn different elements of a raid boss. I understand that not everyone has this privilege, so you might have to start playing with complete strangers at first. If that is the case, I would advise you to join a Discord server that organizes training raids. These are usually organized by experienced players that really enjoy helping other people. I know it might be a bit of a threshold to join a Discord server and start talking to complete strangers, but it is for sure the fastest way to get into raiding. You might even make some new friends while you're at it. A quick Google search already shows a number of Discord groups and guilds you could join. I'm part of the Crossroads in Discord who also organizes raids for people with more experience. In the video description you can find a link for these Discord servers. If you're not into joining Discord servers or raiding guilds or you don't have anyone to play with, you can always use the old fashioned way. Just look for a group through the looking for group panel. From time to time you will find people organizing training raids or there are groups that allow new people to join their raid squad. Don't join groups that ask for LI, KP or CM just yet. These groups usually consist out of experienced players that have already beaten a boss a number of times. The abbreviations LI, KP and CM stand for Legendary Insights, Kill Proof and Challenge Mode. Legendary Insights and Kill Proof are obtained by defeating a boss, which I have discussed in the rewards section of this video. Challenge Mode is essentially a harder version of the boss fight. This should be avoided at all costs if you are new to raiding. When you manage to kill a few raid bosses, you can join the parties that ask for ally or KP and link them your Legendary Insights and Kill Proof. This shows you that you have managed to kill a specific raid boss and can be trusted with basic mechanics of the raid boss. Don't try to join a group that asks for a lot of ally and KP while you don't know the boss mechanics. This could create toxicity because your group expects you to know the mechanics while you don't. This will most likely result in a kick from the party and creates frustration for the party and yourself. Start with the newbies and work your way up to the top. That's the best way to do it. After all, raiding is one of the most challenging pieces of content that we have in Guild Wars 2. Don't underestimate it. I hope this guide helped you to get started with raiding. If you have any questions about raiding, don't forget to leave them in the comments. If you want to support me, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share this video with other players that want to start raiding. For now, I would like to thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video. Peace!